the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. Uh, I produce these reports on a weekly basis during the season. Um, the concept behind it is that the team with the greatest win margin is ranked first, and it goes from there down to 32nd. Win margin or net points can be both positive and negative. We look at that. We look at the average points for scoring offense. We at, look at average points against scoring defense. And we look at average turnover differential. And you may be surprised to see who's where. Let's take a look. All right, Benny, this is looking at last week, week nine of the 2024 2025 season. I have it broke down in the top half and the bottom half. So, as usual, let's congratulate first place across our four categories. And that would be average net points, ANP, Detroit, first place, 13.8 points. Average points for first place, 32.3. Uh, points per game, that would be Detroit again. Average points against first place, that's scoring defense, the L.A. Chargers, only allowing 12.6 points per game. And in first place on average turnover differential, I think we've heard this name before, the Detroit Lions at plus 1.4. So first place straight across. Now, I like to look at the top eight, but traditionally everybody wants to know who the top five are. So giving everybody a chance to kind of look at the top five and net points, you go from Detroit to Buffalo to Pittsburgh, my intriguing team, not my squad, but I just think what they're doing this, this year is wild. Washington and Minnesota. So those are your top five. The top eight would include the Chargers, Baltimore, and Kansas City. Now, the interesting thing with Baltimore is, you know, I said they're not, they should be the odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl. Their, their offense is in second place there at 31.4 points per game. Um, I'm watching your stat, Benny, very closely, because I think that last game they lost, I think you said they gave them the ball like 11 times. Something like they that. They gave, oh, oh, yes. He had 11 carries, yes. And you have you have a number. My magic number for him is going to be 20. 20 touches. Okay. Well, I said I said between 18 and 25. You said between 18 and 25. I'm just going straight 20. I'm looking for a 20 here. You give me an, anywhere near 20, I'm pretty happy. I think they can they can win. Because when you look in the next category, average points against in the top half, uh, do you see Baltimore? And average points against? Yeah. No, I do not. Now, the, the funny thing was, who did they play last week? Was it the Denver? Denver, right? Yes. And I was thinking to myself, now, Denver's got a tough defense. You know what I mean? And they went in there and put some points on the floor. <laughs> it's like, so even though the defense might not be effective all the time, that offense, man, is crazy. That offense is crazy. Um, Kansas City. Average points against, fourth place. Kansas City, points for, 10th place, 25.4 points per game. Behind Green Bay, Minnesota, Cincinnati, and my Niners, much less, my beloved Niners, Tampa Bay and Baltimore, Buffalo. But again, because they had a strong defense, average net points, they come in eighth at plus seven. So there's your, your top half of everybody. My beloved Niners are, are at 3.5 plus 3.5. So as I tell people all the time, I don't make these numbers up. My Niners are where they are. I just have to face the facts. That's where they are. Atlanta, your boy Kirk Cousins, Benny, squarely at the center point of the rankings at 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 points, uh, net points per game. So they got to get something done. Seattle's offense is in the top half, uh, but not their defense. Pittsburgh um, offense is in the top half, but it's down around 13, averaging 23.4 points per game, uh, defensively 14.9 points. But I would hazard a guess, Benny, and I, I didn't look this up, that if you look at the points per game from when Russell went in, it's up. 
Yes. It's up for, on a per game basis. So, um, and then lastly, <laughs> speaking of lastly, here's the second half. You know, I've been taking a close look at Miami because I made the uh, crazy assertion that Tua Tugavailoa's name should be in the discussion for most valuable player. Because when did you say that? The beginning of the season? Well, I said that about two or three weeks ago. When he okay. when he came when he came back, I said if, if he comes back and he moves that needle, because they went they went from a top notch offense to absolute last place in production <laughs> without him. Now that that says a hole was created when you took him out. That that that's an MVP move. And so I have been looking at their numbers, and yeah, their numbers have improved. Uh, they were in absolute last place. Uh, your team is now in absolute last place offensively. But uh, I just, I, I think Tugger at least needs to be in the conversation. Even his defense is playing better, ranked 17th, you know. So um, Arizona's in first place in the division in the NFC West, right? Yep. Interesting because in my rankings, they're 19th of negative 0.8. Um, Defensively, they're giving up 23 points per game in 19th place. Uh, I guess they're in the top half offensively. Let's take a quick look. Where's Arizona? Oh, there they go. 15th place, 23 points per game. So this is the rankings. Uh, you have the last place, Carolina Giants, Carolina, and Las Vegas. Doesn't look like the um, – the uh, who did they bring in? Oh, Bryce Young is back, right? Yeah, Dalton's hand is still less, a little messed up from his car accident. So. Okay. Well, these are the rankings, Bryce. ladies and gentlemen. And and what we do is we take these rankings when it comes to the matchups, and we do some funny math, and we're able to determine what we call the bias plus. And that's the difference between the two teams in their matchups. So, for example, uh, if we go back to the top here, make it a little easier. If Buffalo is playing Pittsburgh, Buffalo is going to be 1.2 points per game better than Pittsburgh. And so that would be the what we call the bias. Um, it's that differential between the average net points. But we also bring in to account uh, the average turnover differential. Yeah. And what do we have here? Was that Buffalo, Pittsburgh? The Buffalo would actually get a little favor on the turnover differential side. And we have formula that we use to bring that all the points. So without further ado, Benny, do you have anything further on the net point power rankings? Um, just while I was looking them over, I remember where Deontay Johnson went. Went to the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> so they understand that uh, in order for them to maximize their offensive effort, they needed one more weapon on defense. I mean, on offense, uh, and they went out and got it. So now he'll be there. Uh, also, probably what convinced them to go ahead and do that is that really bad drop pass that Rashad Bateman had the other day. Oh my God! Really? That was ugly. That was ugly. ugly. So I expect um, the two receiver duo to end up being Deontay Johnson along with uh, Zay Flowers. Well, Benny, um, didn't they add something to defense, the Ravens? Uh, I think they picked up a pass rusher, but I, I can't, uh, kind of slips my mind right now. I believe they did. Okay, exactly what I said. Which obviously they needed, and they also need secondary help, but I don't know where it's going to come from. There was somebody, one of their secondary guys was on TV or someplace apologizing for their performance or something like that. So I, they, at least they're recognizing that that's a weak spot with them. And um, you don't want to get them a shootout, you know, once you get at the playoff levels, if you know, uh, at least you want a defense that's going to be effective. But I'm telling you. Yeah, you want a defense that's going to be effective. But you know what? If you get to the point in the season where you figure that this is what we got, this is what we got to work with. 
then you got to ask for a little bit extra from everybody. Make sure everybody does their job and put your offense into motion as a ball control and big strike offense that it's supposed to be. Some teams are a big strike offense. Some teams are ball control offense. The Ravens are both. But their bread and butter is ball control. And ball control keeps the other offense off the field. So their offense helps their defense. It's yeah. not guaranteed to happen every week. So again, like you said, you don't want to get into shootouts, but I think they have the kind of offense that would still allow them to come from behind if they got in trouble. I had an overconfident Eagle fan say to me uh, that um, Baltimore gets is in trouble if they get behind because then they can't run the ball. I'm like, um, let, let me just tell you, um, Derrick Henry's average per carry is greater than some quarterbacks' average per pass. <laughs> right. so they can still run the ball. And you're disrespecting a two-time MVP who's oh, rolling yes. right now. Who's yeah, because he can right run now. the ball too. But again, you have to be careful what you hear from – listening to Eagles fans about other teams is like clicking on clickbait on, on Facebook. <laughs> Okay, it's no telling what they're gonna say because they don't know. <laughs> all right, all right.